Welcome to the AC 24-7 Top Story Countdown. We'll guide you through the biggest news of the day. Our focus, advocating our rights, advocating equality, advocating health, and advocating Earth. Here's our pick for number four. There's like 10 of them. Traffic chaos on the streets of San Francisco, caused by cars with no one in the driver's seat. There's like one, two, three, four cruise cars blocking no one can get through. These driverless cabs stalled for half an hour outside of the Outside Lands Music Festival. In the last two weeks, incidents involving autonomous vehicles have spiked after a regulatory agency approved GM's Cruise and Google's Waymo to expand their driverless car services in San Francisco. Hello? I can't hear you. Can you the volume? I mean, I couldn't have predicted it any better. I don't think any of us could. San Francisco city leaders, including Fire Chief Janine Nicholson, were outspoken about safety concerns, requesting more testing and regulations for the innovative but potentially dangerous technology. Just days after California's Public Utility Commission voted to allow Cruise and Waymo to roll out more cars in the city at expanded times, a cruise car and a fire truck collided. Now the state's DMV is investigating and Cruise has been ordered to reduce its fleet by half until further notice. It could cost someone their life. When an autonomous vehicle impacts one of our company's ability to respond to an emergency incident, it can impact someone's survivability. Data from the National Highway Transportation Safety Administration shows driverless cars have only resulted in minor injuries. But city officials say that paints an incomplete picture because that data only shows crashes, not delays or chaos caused by stalled cars. Doesn't know what to do. He's about to go drive into this trench right here. This cruise car drove into downed power lines. The data that we're getting is from 911 calls which have tripled as a result of autonomous vehicles doing crazy things. Everyone's getting off the bus because there's no one driving the car. Cruises Prashanti Raman says its mission is to work with cities and make their streets safer. The status quo of transportation is really unacceptable. There's over 40,000 fatalities happening on the roads um, in the United States. We've driven over 3 million driverless miles and we have had no life-threatening injuries or fatalities. This experience may feel futuristic, but the need to buckle up is the same as always. Waymo declined an interview with CNN, but said it's proud of its safety record and its automated driver demonstrates comparable or better performance than a reference model of a human driver. AVs aren't just in San Francisco. Cruz is already operating in Austin, Texas and Los Angeles, too. Chief Nicholson has a warning for other cities. Pay attention, get on board, uh, get ahead of this because it's coming your way. And I don't want them to have uh, happen to them what has happened here. The AdvocateChannel.com looks at the world through the lens of equality and inclusion. Subscribe, like, and share now. AC 24-7's Top Story Countdown continues with our producer's pick for number three. In some disagreements, compromise comes in the middle. But along the southern border, where Texas installed these buoys meant to deter migrants, middle ground may prove hard to find. There were allegations, which I don't know if they were true or not, but allegations uh, that the buoys had drifted toward the Mexico side. The Department of Justice filed a lawsuit against Texas and its Republican governor, calling for the removal of the floating wall arguing it was placed without federal authorization, and later saying a survey found about 787 of the 995 feet of buoys were in Mexico. Monday, as Abbott led Republican governors to the border, he said the buoys have now been repositioned. Texas went back and moved the buoys into a location where it is clear that they are on the United States side, not on the Mexico side. The buoys split opinions as sharply as they divide the water. The buoys are a deterrent. They don't cause a Band-Aid. And if they do, I say, what the heck, stay on your side of the river. A thousand feet of buoys. Well, it may not seem like a lot to those of you out there in the public listening. The fact is it pushes people into the deep water. In a federal court injunction hearing Tuesday, 
U.S. District Judge David Ezra asked for written closing arguments by the end of the week so he can rule on whether to order Texas to remove the buoys. He said he would make a decision as quickly as he can. I'm Emily Schmidt reporting. Like the Advocate channel on Facebook for the best way to get updated stories that advocate for equality, justice, our rights, and more. AC 24-7 continues with today's top two pick. I think the next 15 months is going to be like a lifetime movie. It's, there's going to be so much going to happen on both sides. That is how Caroline Quinlan sees the 2024 presidential race. Hopeful for the possibility of change, but bracing for a year of drama. I, I could go for a fresh start on both sides of the aisle, both for the Republicans and the Democrats. Um, is that going to happen? I don't know. Quinlan has a ringside seat here in the sprawling suburbs of Milwaukee, where Republicans will not only gather tomorrow night for their first primary debate, but also convene next summer in the same arena to crown the party's nominee at the GOP convention. Hello, Milwaukee. Wisconsin has long been a vital stop on the road to the White House, a battleground and bellwether that went for Joe Biden in 2020 and Donald Trump in 2016. Eight candidates will be on stage for the debate, but not Trump. Former Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, a one-time Trump rival, believes that's a mistake. When I stood next to him at that first debate eight years ago in Cleveland, this was a guy who was commanding, who took charge, who took over the debate. And I think it's a missed opportunity for him not to come here to Milwaukee and try and take charge again. As Walker sees it, Trump is not only competing in the primary, he also could start trying to win over some of the voters who once supported him. If they see him fighting, not for the sake of fighting, but fighting for them, fighting for their families, fighting for their schools, uh, fighting for their economic survivability, then I think he starts to pull some of those voters back. Quinlan, an independent, would be in that camp. When we first met during the final weeks of the 2020 campaign, she was torn. I get it why people don't like Trump. She ultimately voted for Trump. Now she's intent on sizing up the field. Is there anyone who stands out to you at this point or a few people? Well, I'm still learning about all of them. Um, I've been really interested in DeSantis, Haley, I'm interested in her. She wants to hear the candidates talk about education, the economy, and crime. She fears Biden is too old, and for now is withholding judgment on Trump. Yeah, he's not my first choice, but yeah, let's see what my choices are. Democrats are also laser focused on Wisconsin. Good to see you, man. With the Biden campaign on the air with a new TV ad. What this debate is about is one of us versus Joe Biden. Brian Schimming, chairman of the Wisconsin Republican Party, said the attention makes clear his state will help settle a larger debate, whether it's a rematch between Biden and Trump or not. I don't think anything's inevitable. History is full of folks who, you know, were ahead early and then didn't end up the nominee in both parties. Follow The Advocate channel on Twitter and Instagram to stay updated on stories that matter every day. We're now at our number one story of the day. Take a look. We know that we have enough money to continue to support the ongoing life-saving efforts. FEMA Administrator Deanne Criswell says the agency's disaster fund is running out of money. Amid growing concern, the funding could lapse if Congress doesn't pass a spending bill, a FEMA official told CNN. As we do our analysis and we make our reports to Congress monthly, we take into account situations just like this so we can make sure that we always have enough funding. However, Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell has indicated he expects Congress will approve more funding for FEMA. Uh, we'll be authorizing in the same bill, in all likelihood, cons uh, considerable increase uh, for FEMA. It comes as the agency pushes forward with the response to Maui's devastating wildfires in a year that's setting records for billion-dollar weather disasters before the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season has even arrived. And as hurricane and tropical storm activity is already causing damage. Tropical Depression Herald plowing through Texas after making landfall as a tropical storm Tuesday morning. The storm pummeling the state with high winds, heavy rain, flooding and tornado warnings as it pushes towards Mexico. I'm Reed Binion reporting. Thanks for watching the Advocate Channel's top stories. We're on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and YouTube. Follow, like, and share, or check out advocatechannel.com for even more stories that advocate for you.